So this is an exciting one, guys. I upgraded to the GH6. The GH6, don't you know about the streaking issues? Don't you know that it has bad autofocus? I do know that, but you know what? It still might be my favorite camera of all time. Let me tell you why. Okay, so this is not gonna be a full review of this camera. There are lots of reviews. This is an older camera. It came out a year ago. The reason why I recently became more interested in it and why I ended up picking it up is because it is a year old and so it's on the used market now. So you can pick this thing up for a really good price. And honestly, I couldn't be happier with the camera. I'm a huge GH5 fan. I used that thing for five years. I knew every dial on that. And jumping to the GH6 is one of the easiest camera moves I've ever done. Basically, if you know the GH5, you know the GH6 already, except that the things that you didn't like about the GH5 have mostly been updated and are better now. The menu system, the ergonomics, this dope-ass screen, there's so many upgrades to this camera that I feel like were overlooked simply because of the few issues that it does have. It has an issue with streaking. I'll share the details about the streaking phenomena. Now my second and final issue with the GH6 is been streaking actually. But as we all know, all cameras have issues you need to work around. You just need to know what they are and know the ways to work around those issues. The GH6 has so much to offer. Let me tell you my favorite things about it. So I think the primary reason you would get a GH6 is got to be the image stabilization. I mean, that's the thing about this camera that sets it apart from all others. Second to none, you can hand hold high res photos with this camera and it's just a joy to use. I've just gone for three months without having image stay because I sold my GH5 about three months ago and not having it and then coming back to it uh, really makes you appreciate what this camera does. It's just a joy to look at. I got the 12 to 35 lens in here shooting in ProRes Cinema 4K 24 frames. And this is what you can expect from that. Just holding it by the lens looks great. Autofocus, not too shabby either. Second thing I like about this is uh, the iteration from the GH5 is all the customizable buttons. Any button you wanna customize, you just hold it down, change it to what it is, save that in your preset, you're good to go for next time. It's so easy, so quick to use. The third thing I like about this camera are all of its, its exposure tools. A lot of cameras, they'll just give you a histogram and that's what you have to expose your image properly. This camera gives you more tools than you need. It's got histogram, yes, but it's also got vector scope for checking your skin tones, full waveform, which you can move around and expand to take up the whole screen or just a little part of it. And it also has another option. I don't remember what it's called, but it basically lets you pick the exposure of any pixel within the screen so that you can expose for your gray card and make sure that you're set up perfectly for your shot. It has so many tools that you don't have an excuse to not have a good shot with this camera. <laughs> so another thing that sets this camera apart from all other cameras that are out these days is gonna be the high frame rate options. So the GH5 was no slouch when it came to high frame rates. It had 120p at HD, and but that was only an 8-bit. So you can really push the grades too much. It was only a dream to be able to have 4K, let alone 4K 10-bit 420, 120 frames a second. If you want to go up to 200, that cuts to HD, but still 10-bit, so you can still push grades around. It's just a joy to use. The fourth thing that I love about this camera is actually a carryover from the GH5, and that is shutter angle. If you don't know what I'm talking about when I say shutter angle, you are missing out. You'll probably have heard the 180 rule where you take your frame rate and you double it and that's what your shutter speed is to get the appropriate motion blur 
that kind of mimics the way our brain and eyes translate motion. Well, if you have shutter angle built into your camera instead of shutter speed, you don't have to do the math like 24 frames, so my shutter angle has to be twice that. It's gotta be 48, it's not gonna be 48 because it only comes in 50. You don't have to worry about that. It's already set. You set it at 180 degrees and the rest is taken care of. You can change the frame rates from 60 to 120 to 24, and it's always going to be the appropriate shutter angle for that. Huge time saver. Once you have it, you'll question why not all manufacturers have added it to their camera. So the fifth thing that I love about this camera is gonna be the codex that it shoots in, but more specifically, the ProRes options. I don't feel like in the marketing or in the videos that I've seen for ProRes that I've seen a video that explains why ProRes is such a good codec. It wasn't until I started using it that I really started to appreciate it. So yes, there is a big downside to using ProRes. These files are massive. This shoots in a 4K 60p option that uses 1.9 gigs a second. That's a huge file. Luckily, we can record it to SSD recording, which is very nice. But where ProRes starts to shine is when I bring it to my PC, which is not a great PC. It's probably six years old now. Bought it for AutoCADing. I have to use proxies. I have to use workarounds. I have to color grade separately from cutting and editing because if I keep all of those color grades on, I can't see what I'm doing. Bring in ProRes. I can play these massive files straightforward without dropping frames or anything. Like it, it's kind of spectacular. It's saved the life of my computer for at least another year. So internal ProRes, something I didn't expect to love so much. I even have it on my Blackmagic, but because it shoots in B-RAW, I've never even tried it out. And this is going to be the first talking head that I'm using the ProRes on the Blackmagic as well because of the benefits that I've seen in turning these videos around using the ProRes. So that's gonna be it for this video, pretty quick. Uh, there's going to be a lot more content coming with the GH6 and some story-driven content where I use this as my primary outdoor filmmaking tool. So if that interests you, stick around. If you got any value out of this, give it a thumbs up. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>